Q World, welcome back. Uh, another episode, Q World Podcast, YouTube channel. Uh, I want to say thank you guys for all your support, everything you've been doing. Uh, hopefully our, our information and our uh, topics have been helpful, inspirational, and uh, any, even educational. So we want to continue that path. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us and subscribe to our Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud Podcasts. We really appreciate it. Uh, today, uh, we're fortunate enough to have a, uh, a WNBA champion, you know what I'm saying, champion. She won championships in the <laughs> WNBA. Uh, she's also a two-time All-Star for the WNBA. Uh, she has uh, gone to Kansas University as a All-American KU basketball player, two-time All-Big 8, uh, one-time All-Big 12 player of the year. Uh, this is Tamika Dixon, hailing out of Northeast of the United States. <laughs> um, hey, how you doing? Hey, Marlon, how are you? <laughs> very good, very good. Oh, good. Oh, so what's up, what's going on out there in the East Coast these days? Well, you know, we're, we're, where I'm at is considered kind of like the epicenter of the COVID situation. Um, I'm about 35 minutes from New York City and New Jersey's been hit pretty hard with with uh with this virus so you know we're all we're all just trying to maintain trying to you know keep our family safe and i stay in as much as i can right right it's hard it's tough right now too like you said yeah to be, uh to be able to stay in all day and that, you're right it's such a high like new york got hit hard hard like you guys had numbers were out of this world every day how many people were either dying or getting it it was crazy yeah yeah, it, it's crazy. It's still, cra you know, I, I just actually was watching the news. They do an update every day right. on, you know, the, the new COVID cases, the, the deaths. And, you know, it's just, it's crazy. The, the numbers are still staggering. And even with that, you know, you're looking at it from a positive perspective because there's not as many new cases. Right. But the number of deaths, you know, every day are just, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. This is definitely a game changer, you know? And, um, you know, I think it's gonna change the way sports, the business, I mean, the way we live from now on uh, mm -hmm. forever. I mean, we're gonna, it's gonna change the whole world. I will say this is becoming, so I, I, my outlook on this is like coming from a digital marketing side, social media side. I believe that our whole platform of how we manage and run business and see patients even in the hospitals is gonna mm -hmm. be more allowed like this with our, you know, iPads and uh, like I said, Zoom meetings or whatever the case may be. Everybody's gonna be doing more of a yeah structural business that way. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. Like like you said, the world is forever forever will be changed from this moment on and you know what it's just trying to figure out how to adjust, you know, moving forward now. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, you know, I know everybody wants to know about, you know, what, what the real deal is. So uh, let's talk a little <laughs> bit about basketball. Uh, so, you know, from, from just the ground zero, what, what motivated you to be a, you know, a basketball player? Um, so, you know, growing up, uh, my father was a, a pretty decent basketball player and um, he uh, was on a full scholarship to American University, uh, him and my mom um, had me when they were seniors in high school. So. Um, you know, I was a young, young kid watching, actually, you know, growing up in that time where he was uh, going to college. And uh, I, I remember, you know, three or four years old, you know, him coming home from college and, and, and taking me, you know, out to the parks with him and, and things like that. So I was introduced to the game, you know, very early on with him. Right. Um, and, and, and just from that point on, I kind of, I was always daddy's little girl. So he'd right. take me everywhere and I, and the game kind of rubbed off on me, right. you know, from just watching him. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Did yeah. your aspirations to play past college, uh, come from him as well? I believe so. Right. Um, definitely. Um, as I got older and things like that, um, I would see him, he, he was a, actually, uh, I'll give you a little, you know, background story on him. Mm -hmm. um, he was a projected lottery pick his senior year in college. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and 10 games into his senior, he was uh, the second leading sto scorer in the nation. Wow. Um, yeah. At, at work, work, for real. Yeah, 
Yeah, and um, 10 games into his senior year, he tore his ACL. Um, so it kind of ended, uh, well, he thought it was going to end his professional, you know, at, at aspirations. Right. You know, as you know, you know, back then in the, you know, early, late 70s, early 80s, yeah. you know, that's kind of like a career ending yeah. injury. But, tear but ACL. The, the technology or the, uh, you know, education to change the, the knee surgery now. Now there are little holes in your knee and you got right. it. Yeah, like, yeah. That big old scar down the whole knee to get, yeah. Yeah, so he, he kind of endured that. Um, he was able to come back. Um, he played a little bit. He was drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh, wow. He played two years in the NBA, and then he finished up his professional career overseas, played in Argentina, Italy, France. Right. So he had a, you know, in spite of, he had a decent career. So, you know, I seen him. I seen his, you know, projection into the professional ranks. And, um, bef you know, when, while he was doing that, there was no WNBA, obviously. Right, right. But he would come home and share stories with me about the opportunities um, for women playing over in other countries. Right. So, you know, I started to kind of have that in my, you know, in my mind early on right. growing up. And I always, you know, said to myself, there was, if, if there was nothing here in the United States, that there would be an opportunity for me. If, you know, if I did the right thing to play. Right. Yeah. So yeah, he he always shared that with me. Wow, wow. So you got so you got so you got the beginning early on. You got the bug. So you you itching, you running, and you doing it. So oh, yeah. when did you realize, like junior high, high school, that you really had the stuff? Like, what, what when did you realize, like, okay, I could really be be pretty good? Um, I grew up uh, always playing with guys. Um, mm -hmm. You know, all the time. So my father had me. Um, in our uh, early early leagues, travel team leagues and stuff like that. From fourth grade on, um, I was playing with fourth grade travel team boys all the way up. Oh, wow. Um, so I, I didn't really actually play competitively with, with girls until eighth grade. Wow. And then by that time, I was just like, like head and shoulders so much better. Yep. Um, than any other girls that play that played. So, so yeah, it was it was. Um, he had me playing with with guys, you know, with little boys early. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that definitely helped, you know, with my development into the game and things like that. Right. Right. But yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty awesome. So, that, I mean, to be honest with you, that's cool because it's kind of like it made you. You didn't know it at the time while you were playing, but he right. had you like heads, speed, toughness, yeah. mentality, all that was being taught at that time without you even knowing it. Right. And then when you got with the girls, it's like, ah, oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> it was a cakewalk by that <laughs> time. <laughs> exactly. It was a cakewalk, but yeah, I, I definitely attribute, you know, some of my early success, you know, as a child, just being able to you know just playing with the boys and you know being able to keep up with them and you know their speed their agility their quickness right. um and until i got it and uh right. yeah yeah so it definitely helped me so like even back then i was wondering like because today you know they have gyms everywhere trainers everywhere like where would you go like just physically i know we're outside all the time of course mm -hmm. on, the, on you know cement courts everywhere, iron yeah. rims, you know, chain right. nets, you know what I'm talking about? Right. So like, yeah, what was, what was it like out there for you and where were you guys playing at? Same thing, yeah. uh, out, you know, on the concrete and mm -hmm. on the blacktop, um, yeah. you know, back then, you know, and I, and I share these stories a lot, you know, there were, you couldn't ride by a court and it not be open, right. you know, and, and a lot of people on there playing. So you can always find a pickup game somewhere, you know, when I was growing up. Yeah. Um, and I like to attribute again my success to you know growing up on on a blacktop and you know playing outside because you know you have to adjust. Mm -hmm. It's it's these kids now they think they all all need an air conditioned gym <laughs> and, and a trainer. I mean, but you have to adjust to the elements oh, you yeah. when, when you're playing outside, and it's a whole different animal. Really and my is. father used to always say, you know, when we were trained, we were trained outside. And he was like, if you could shoot, you know, and and adjust your shot to you know the wind blowing and and still you know hit those shots with a high consistency you know then you, that when you get into a, a gym with no wind and no you right. know no the perfect elements you're gonna you're gonna kill it 
true. So, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I always, you know, really loved to play outside. You know, that was the thing to do anyway growing up. Mm -hmm. So, so when you when you got to, uh, so you moved to junior high. When you junior high, did they have AAU during junior high? Did you play on the A AAU teams back then? No, AAU really wasn't, didn't start to get big until probably my sophomore year in high school. Okay. That's when, you know, that's when I started hearing about AAU and that's actually um, my junior year is my first experience with, with AAU basketball. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, early on, um, middle school, elementary school, there was no AAU. It wasn't big that back then. Right, right, right. You just played high school ball. That was it, and that's where everybody saw you. Yep, that was it. Yep, absolutely. Got you. So, so when you, so let's talk about your transition because obviously, you you were amazing. And um, but when you went to high school, when did you realize that you're going to have opportunity to go, you know, to the next level, play college somewhere? Mm -hmm. What was that? It's probably so. You know, back then you'd have. Um, the, the elite camps where you know you'd have like the ABCD camps and mm -hmm. where they would send where you would uh, you would perform against like maybe they'll or they'll bring in the top 100 players from your region or something like that um, I started getting invitations to that probably my sophomore year in high school um, but my father would never let me go because he would say he would say um, I'm not first of all I'm not paying for you to go right <laughs> to any camp and be the best one there and all of this because yeah I got to waste yeah. of time yeah it's a waste of time it's yeah. a waste of money and if you're good the colleges will come to you so he never really believed in these camps so my sophomore year um is when I started to get like a little bit of a buzz and I remember a couple of the camps calling the house and saying well you know will pay for her to come so it was my first kind of invitation out wow. um yeah they said she don't have to pay anything we just need her to come to kind of blow up the camp right, right. you know to get the college coaches to come in and start to look right right so so that was kind of like my first you know invitation to you know one of the elite camps mm -hmm. and then my junior year is when i had my first aau experience um playing aau ball and you know back even back then it still was a little different than it is now um mm -hmm. because they had where you would they it would only be like eight i think it was like only eight or eight to ten teams in new jersey gotcha. that, you know that were aau teams gotcha. and you had to get out of your state to represent the state of New Jersey in the national tournament. I see. Yes. Now it's like hundreds of AAU teams mm -hmm. in the state, and I don't know how they get, you know, okay. to the back. But back then it was really competitive. Right. So, you know, if your team lost, mm -hmm. you know, the team that beat you can say, well, we want Tamika to come play with our team. We, right. cause we, we got a better chance of going to the nationals. So by the time you finish yeah. in the tournament, you got like, you know, 10 to 12 of the best players in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And now you're taking that team to right. compete against, um, you know, the top teams around the country. So that's kind of how it was, right. you know, when I was coming up and mm -hmm. it was competitive. Yeah, yeah. Did you <laughs> guys, did, did you guys win the, win the national championship or how did you guys win We that? We didn't, we came in uh, my junior year, we came in, I, Sixth place? Yeah. yeah. Sixth. And then my senior year, I think we came in fourth. We were right yeah. there. Yeah. Gotcha. But but it was some there was some it was some tough teams. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It was I, it was the best of the best. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's good runs though. Some good runs, right? Oh, absolutely. 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 Yeah. So so now you so now you go out there. How did the recruiting come in then? So I mean now obviously we were in a met you know put everything together <clears throat> so right. obviously you're getting seen by colleges so talk about that experience with college and the recruiting aspect and um, right. what made you make the decision where you went so my sophomore year is when I started to get a little bit of a buzz but that buzz was only like regional so it was only like east coast you know most of the college coaches knew me up and down the east coast um, where I started to get national in att uh, attention was my junior year when I first competed in the AAU tournament and gotcha. um, started to get introduced to coaches around the country. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so so that <laughs> that um, AAU tournament, I, I had an awesome tournament. I never forget right. um, when I was there. Um, 
four days, we were there two weeks. So four days in, um, I, you know, I, I check in with my mom and dad and call and make sure everything's going, you know, good back at home. Right, and right. the tournament was actually in Clovis, New Mexico. Okay. So I'm in Clovis with my teammates. <laughs> I call back home. I'm like, you know, mom, everything, you know, checking in, see how everything's going. And she's like, what in the world right. are you doing out there? I'm getting all these college letters <laughs> from all over the world. And, I, and, you know, I was like, mom, you know, be honest, I'm out here balling out. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of like my introduction to, you know, to being like, you know, nationally recognized and, you know, having all the attention from the coaches, and yeah, it was it, it became it was crazy after that. Right. After that right. that summer, that junior that summer um, of my junior year, and then moving into my you know junior basketball season, uh, high school basketball season, it, it was it was nonstop after that. <laughs> right. That's what I'm talking about. So tell tell us like what schools were were like. Give us some you know back then. I know the big schools. We know obviously Univer University of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Big UConn yeah. was big, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, so what schools? Nope. Were looking Those at? were still the big two, um, and, and both of them were were in the hunt. Um, I, but it was over three hundred schools to be honest with wow. you, recruiting me um, from from as far as Hawaii, you know, all the way over that way, and a lot of California team uh, schools, excuse me, um, Midwest school. I mean, from all over. Right. all over I, I pretty much had my kind of my, my pick of yeah. what school I wanted to go to yeah mm -hmm. so it, it was fun times it, it became overwhelming right right you know, yeah. as I as I moved into it but um to to start out with and to feel like you know all of these schools want you right you know, it, it does it does a little something for your ego <laughs> <laughs> right I love it so so tell so talk a little bit about the uh the so let's talk about the school. Well, where'd you, what visits did you take, obviously? Mm -hmm. And then for the young athletes out there going through, you know, they're just athletes right now go, trying to pick a school, mm -hmm. which one they should go to, what made you pick or what process made you pick where you wanted to go and where you went? Right, so so um, I was able to narrow it down to like uh, 30 schools. Right. So we got, nice. we got the 30 schools. Yeah. And that's I was like, lot, that's, that's a, it was yeah. way too many, yeah. but I couldn't, I was right. like, I couldn't get it down. Right. So we, we did 30 home visits. Oh. Uh, yeah. We did 30 oh. home visits, like two and three a week. Like we were just knocking them out and you know. I wasn't cooking or nothing though. Cause I know my mom tried to cook all the time. Like, mom, you can't cook for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she threw a little something together yeah, okay. now and again. <laughs> It got to it got to a point where she was just yeah. ordering out. Like, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> the McDonald's, here you go, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but we got it down to thirty home visits, um, and then from there I chose five uh, five campus visits. Gotcha. Um, so that's kind of how we kind of narrowed it down. Yeah. I didn't take any campus visits or official campus visits to anywhere close that we could drive to you know right. like the Rutgers and Seton Hall all those local universities we just took unofficial visits to right. um, and that gave me an opportunity to see some of the closer schools mm -hmm. and then I, I used my um, official visits for schools that you know were out that I was interested in like a Kansas right. um, University of Houston was another one um, University of Georgia uh, little dogs University of Michigan, mm -hmm. and I can't even remember my fifth one. Good Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so long ago. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, it's all good. Uh, but yeah, I took the five campus visits, but I knew right away, you know, Kansas was gonna be my my um, my choice. Right, right, yeah. right. So when so when you talk about uh, so so Bob, I we chose KU. We, mm -hmm. we we got that rock chalk baby, and uh, uh, all day go yeah. KU. <laughs> So, so let's talk about that reason. Let's talk about who was there, who was the coach there, mm -hmm. uh, why you chose KU, and the impact she had on you and your, your college career. Because that's a big deal. I think people make a decision. Like, you're tell, tell us what, why you made the decision, what, re what really is important about where you go, and mm -hmm. you know, and how it impacted you. Mm -hmm. So I think, I, I really think, 
when you when you're selecting somewhere to be for four years mm -hmm. i think a lot of it is how comfortable you are with the coaching staff and the people around you right. um for me that's what it was it was uh marion washington was the coach at university of kansas mm -hmm. um she was the person that recruited me yeah. as well as the assistants um but i i established a relationship and a trust um with that coaching staff right so um that was what kind of like put them over the edge as far as you know making me feel comfortable and you know those those intangibles that are needed when you're going to you know to or looking to go to the next step in your in your journey um so yeah the just the the um the the impact that she had on my family when she came into the um home visit right. and i think what really stood out to me was beyond basketball um she was able to create a relationship with my with my uh, parents that let them know that no matter what i was going to walk away with my degree right. um, no matter what outside of basketball and i think that kind of uh resonated really loudly with them um but i knew you know she just cared for me right. you know beyond what you know what i could give her on the basketball court so I think that, you know, when, when kids are looking at their next steps, um, they need to be able to connect with somebody, right. um, you know, on a coaching staff that they know would, would really, you know, without a doubt, have their back. Right. Uh, right. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. So, yeah. yeah so, so you go to you go to Rock Chalk Jayhawk land. Yes. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so and here's here, so let's move into now. Obviously, you coming in. Uh, highly recruited. I'm sure mm -hmm. KU excited. Like we're gonna make an impact now. We got our guard. She's gonna run things. Yeah. Talk about the transition from high school to college and what it was like. Was it easy? Was it hard? Like how did you adapt? All that good mm -hmm. stuff. It was a difficult transition, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I don't think it's I don't think it's an it, it's an ever, ever excuse me it's ever an easy transition right. Right. for somebody you know coming right you know from high school into um, into their freshman year in college. Um, it was a difficult transition for me, um, just trying to um, gauge the speed of the game. Speed of the game picks mm -hmm. up tremendously. Right. Um, and you're trying to kind of, and, and then on top of that, I was switching positions. So in, co in um, excuse me, in high school, I played uh, shooting guard, small forward. Three, and then, two. yeah, and then in uh, college, Coach Washington felt like uh, I could be a, uh, a superior point guard. Wow. So she kind of switched positions now. You know, point guard is kind of like the head yes. of everything. So right. yes. for me having to, you know, to deal with that transition you alone. Be, you're a leader on the floor, right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Wow. So it was a difficult transition for me. Um, there was, I can't lie, there was some, some um, periods where I didn't think that I would, you know, be staying in Kansas. I thought, you know, maybe I should go a little closer to home. Right. You know, I'm far away, you know, my family, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, things aren't, I'm not adjusting as well as I really thought I was on the athletic uh, side of things. So maybe, you know, you start to think of, find excuses, mm -hmm. you know, within yourself. But my, my mom and dad was like, Nah, <laughs> that's, that's not happening. You know, hang in there. Everything's going to be okay. You know, you know, you know, you're in the right spot. You know, who your coaches, you know, so hang in there. Everything's going to be okay. Right. So, yeah, but it was a difficult transition. It was well, you know, well, difficult. You know, and I think what, what people understand, like, it doesn't matter what sport you go into college where they, there's, there's it's a different expectation. Like, it isn't like high school. It's kind of like they kind of baby you through and you get through with things. It didn't really mm -hmm. as intense. Mm -hmm. uh, the seriousness is not as in, is not, you know, that way. You you really, right. you know, when you're in high school, you're the best on the team, probably the best. Like you said, you were the best destination. Yep. I knew when I walked on the field, I was the best out there. Right. So it's kind of like, you know, different. But when you go to college, it's like, no, 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 son. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. Everybody here good. And Absolutely. not only that, they're switching stuff. So talk about how, like, literally, like the mental the strenuous of like you got to learn these sets, learn these these, these different you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, what do you call them? Um, darn it, you're all, all the plays, yeah, all plays, the plays. yeah, all the plays. 
yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah, talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So it, you know, and that's another thing. You might, you know, in high school, you might run two or three plays, and that be your whole yeah. playbook, you know, for the year. <laughs> Um, in college, you know, it's it's they give you a textbook. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All the formations, all the plays. You know, if this don't happen, then this right. is gonna happen. You know? So right. all you know, all of that, you know, also, and you know, you really have to become a student of the game. You know, you might have just been able to live off just being, your, you know, being athletic, more mm-hmm. athletic than anybody, right. or just being a more superior athlete mm-hmm. than the next person in high school. Right. In college, you can't, you oh, know, yeah. it's, it's so many other intangibles that go into, you know, you being successful. Right. So you can't just live off of, you know, you being a superior athlete. You know, now the mental... Um, all the mental things come into play as well, you know, when you're when you're an athlete in college, and you have to make that adjustment, and it's a difficult one for a lot of people. Right. Right. Did you watch a lot of film back then in college? Oh, I lived in a film room. Right. Um, lived in a film, and that's another thing. You you become a student of the game. You know, you just, you know, I I lived in, you know lived in the film room I tell you yeah every, every chance I got because I wanted to be the best player that I could be right. um, and the only way sometimes to do that is you have to see yourself on film right. not only that you know a lot of times today um, you know you ask a kid what they want to do what do they want to be and a kid to tell you no I want to play in the NFL right. I want to be you know an NBA player I want to be a WNBA player mm-hmm. but when you ask him, you know, ask him or her, well, you know, who you watching? Who's your favorite player? They, you know, a lot of times they can't even tell you that. Right. You know, what are you watching? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, what are you trying to, where are you trying to go? Because you got to have, so, yeah. Right. So, so I used to watch, you know, I would have my coaches, I would ask my coaches, there were some, some players that I thought, you know, I could learn from. Right. Like a Dawn Staley, right. Andrea Stinson. Right. Play, I would ask them, can you get me game film on these players? Mm-hmm. So I could watch them. Wow. That's you know? awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Try to emulate some of the things that they do or something that they do well that maybe I can add to my game. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was I was an avid, uh, avid film watcher. I watched film a lot. Wow. Wow. So I, I think we set it up to where you know that everyone knows it is definitely a game changer. Uh, the work ethic and the expectations in college are a lot higher. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and a, a lot of players, you know, with the mental, it's, it's all like the mental. Uh, now we have these, these different things going on for athletes where they can't, they're mentally challenged when, you know, and uh, the disability they have mentally, uh, mm-hmm. the needs and everything for the athlete today is totally different. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, how, how we had to be back in, the, in our day, uh, right. you know, and, and for you, like you say, you had to physically just go ahead and decide, I'm going to do this. You might, you may, and everyone, and I think what people are, I think what people get, uh, I think they look at you like a person with, I mean, you just, you know, all the accolades you've had and all the success you've had. And they think, oh man, she just had it, man. That's just, you know, she just got it like that. They don't really understand, like like you just said, your first three months at KU, you was like, I'm ready to go home, like mm-hmm. seriously. Mm-hmm. And that's no joke, like you really want to go home, right? Absolutely. So, so I, I think it's important for everybody in Q world to understand, like no matter business or sports or whatever, you're all, everyone's gonna have those down times where, you know, you're gonna have to just check, check yourself and just fight through it. Just keep mm-hmm. moving, keep working. Mm-hmm. And then find those little bitty positives to, to keep stacking and building on and then over yep. time you find that you'll see more success so right and then a lot of times you know when you get um like a somebody like myself who was highly recruited right. um usually that first year um that co- that freshman year in college is is really your first si- first real adversity right. you know that you're facing True. because from in high school you were far superior than everybody else in college, that first year, first you know, freshman year is really the first time that you, you, you got a little bit of adversity. You know, now you got players that are equally as talented as you, and you got to try to figure out and decipher, you know, how you can, you know, separate yourself again. Right. Um, so yeah, those those times, man, you you got to figure out how you can do that and not lose, you know, confidence. Right. 
right. um, and who you are and, and, and what you've already accomplished up to that point. So obviously you did a great job with that. Um, talk a little bit about the success you had at uh, KU as far as you know, your personal success, the team success. Cause mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the years you were there, I remember, uh, and I'll, I'll, before you answered, I remember playing with you at, uh, at the uh, basketball court at Robinson. It was a little gym at yeah. KU. Uh, they actually, it's only, they still have the court there, I think, but it's not the actual gym anymore. Everybody goes to for, that, for the KU, uh, for the uh, students population. It was, so we would just go there as for athletes out of off seasons and times. And we just play with whoever the students or whoever was there, or we'd bring mm -hmm. our own players on our teams, right? Remember? And one time you had about two or three of your girls with you. And, uh, <laughs> and we had uh, our team, we had the football players. And I ain't gonna lie to you, boy. <laughs> I, Cause you know how we come in like all cocky, like yeah. We, Cause football players, they can do everything: sing, dance, shoot. We can act. <laughs> Just tell us what you will. We can, we'll do it, right? That's true. So, so, so we came in thinking we gonna dominate. Man, y'all beat us by like three points, I think, on that game. Boy, y'all was killing us. So, uh, but yeah, no, I think, just talk a little bit about your success and, and all that stuff you guys had. A, you had a KU and T. Oh yeah, we so even prior to me coming in, um, you know, the year before, um, we had a lot of success. Um, we were our team before me um, was consistently ranked in the top 15. Right. Um, you had, you know, players like Angela Acock, Sharice Sampson, and that crew that kind of um, led the led the charge mm -hmm. um, my senior year in high school. So then I was coming in adding, so it was Angela Acock who was uh, the, she was an All-American out of Texas. Right. Um, so she came in and then the year after her, Sharice Sampson was an All-American out of California. Mm -hmm. And then the third year, I was the All-American coming out of New Jersey. Wow. So, you know, you, you were starting to see like a build mm -hmm. in, in getting, you know, the top, being able, them to, being able to, or Coach Washington and her staff being able to secure, you know, some of that top talent right. um, and get them to come to Kansas. And we were starting to build, you know, a nucleus of players um, around us. Um, so we were, you know, perennial um, top 15 team um, every year. Um, and then, you know, my freshman year coming in was no different, you know. Um, you had those players and you add Elisa Tate, right. Erica Muncy, and all of those players that came in, you know, to add a, and give a little bit more to what we already were. Um, yeah, we, we, were, we were tough, yeah. um, you know, and and Coach Washington was her nickname was the dean, the <laughs> dean of the Big A coaches. So she had that respect from the conference. Right. Um, and you know everybody knew that when they played against Kansas, you know they were going to play against you know one of the top teams in the conference. Right. Um, and we were always you know always uh, competing, you know pretty deep in the NCAA tournament. Right. So you know we were a team on the rise. Um, and you know, right on the cusp of being, you know, one of those perennial, um, one of those teams that you know, every year, year in and year out, you know, Kansas is going to be there. Right, right, no doubt, no doubt. Mm -hmm. So, and and you went on to, uh, you know, so people know. So the, you were in a position where you came in. It was the Big Eight, right? Right. And then right. your your second half of your your career became the Big Twelve, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. So yep. just just so everybody knows how tough 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 you were like you were the big eight player of the year when it right. was the big eight right right <laughs> so you saw, oh, you're gonna add texas you want to add texas all right yeah to all the Texas school okay who y'all add <laughs> then you went on to become the big 12 player of the year all Correct. right so yep. ladies and gentlemen this girl was no <laughs> joke <laughs> come one, come all. You better bring your shoes. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me say. I mean, the Big Eight was tough, yeah. but um, but the Big Twelve when you added those, especially on the women's basketball side, right. when you added Texas, Texas Tech, you Ooh. know, all those Texas ah. schools it, to what we already ah. had, you know, right. it, it, it was it was really really competitive. Yeah. So it was it was definitely good to be. You know, big Big Twelve Player of the Year amongst you know some of those those big teams as well. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So now you you got these accomplishments. Um, you know, I think we all know one of the greats at, at KU 
uh, one of the first, you know, well-known international, national women basketball players was Lynette Woodard. Yes. And uh, I know you still to today have a good relationship, but tell everybody about Lynette Woodard and the impact she had on you uh, from at Kansas and in, uh, in your pro career as well. Yeah, so Lynette was um, instrumental, you know, to, to my success, I think. Um, she was was really, um, she, she was around us a lot, which, you know, you can get a lot in, 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 from her just right. by her presence. Um, and coach kept, you know, kept her around a lot. She came around, she, you know, supported us. Yes. Um, she talked to us. Um, and it was just great to, you know, who, who doesn't know Lynette Wood, a four-time All-American, um, you know, first first woman to be a, a Harlem Globe trotter, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Hall of Famer, yep. all everything. Right. So I, you know, whenever she came around, you know, I would soak <laughs> up any knowledge that I could, you know, because who who better than to get it from a Lynette Wood? Yeah, no doubt. You know, um, all everything, man. I, I put her in the same category, you know, uh, a lot of people talk about Cheryl Miller being the best to ever do it. Right. You know, I I, yeah. I love Cheryl. Yeah, Cheryl I tight though. Cheryl. Yeah. Cheryl tight. Yeah, yeah. But I gotta say, my girl Lynette Woodard <laughs> right up there with her. <laughs> right, up, right, right. right up there with her with her on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Lynette, man, just but more than that, just an awesome person. Like you know, you you sit and talk to her, and you know you. You're humbled by just how humble she is, all right, you know, all, right. all her accolades and everything that she's accomplished in the game. And, you know, she, you talk to her, it's like talking to a big sister. So, right, yeah, right, right. it was amazing to have her around and, you know, being able to pick her brain on, on, on a lot of different things. Right, right, right. Yeah, and I, you know, that's what I love about KU. I, I'll be honest with you that I still remember to today, especially during our time frame, we were like family, like everybody, you know, we didn't hang out every day or whatever, but we were like family. I remember even when like Danny would come back, Danny Manning would come back. Yeah. He would always, he'd see us out. He was always taking care of us, trying to buy us food or yep. whatever, you know, when I played football, I didn't play basketball. So it was like a big, like you said, and yeah. then that was a person too. Like I would talk to all the time, just asking about his experiences and mm-hmm. his knowledge from about life and things. So yeah, yeah, it's, it definitely is a big, you know, big family affair. Right. You know, even today, you know, I go back and and see, you know, people that some people that are still there from you know from my time. You know yeah, and it, and it's crazy. You know, it's just you, you fall right back in the place. You know, yeah. with with those times. So yeah. it's it's great. You know, yeah, yeah. great. So uh, let's go with uh, the next step now. You know, I know you, you so you got to college, you, you, you know, you won the Big 12 Player of the Year. Boom, next step is pro. Mm-hmm. So when you're, so let's talk about this transition. So you go in your senior year. How, mm-hmm. I mean, how did it work for you? Pick an agent, like all that stuff, that process, like, cause not only that, like the WNBA wasn't that, that it was pretty young at that time. And mm-hmm. it's, it's involvement. So talk about that and the process and, and all that. Sure. So in 1996 so we can go back to when i was recruited so the person that was instrumental in recruiting me to the university of kansas was renee brown who was marion washington's first assistant um so in 1996 um she had taken taken the uh director of players personnel's position for the wnba so that was my junior year. So I knew, you right. know, in speaking to her, that this WNBA was coming. Right. Um, okay. You know, it, 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 you know, the in, the inaugural season was 1997. So it was my, you know, right after my senior season. Right. Um, but I had it, you know, had a little bit of an in right. on, you know, how the league was going to do this and and all the things that were coming up, you know, coming down the pipe, right. because I, you know, I knew she was leaving for that. Um, in addition to that, so in 1996, she took that position. And then if you remember that 1996 Olympic team um, was kind of like the end to the WNBA season. So you had that 1996 team that they put, you know, all their marketing into and the Lisa Leslie, Cheryl right. Swoops, and all those girls coming back and competing and winning the gold medal in 96. And then those players moving into the WNBA. Right. Um, so it was kind of like this big buildup, you know, big, huge buildup into the, um, 
into the creation of the WNBA. Right. Um, so I knew it was coming down the pipe from Renee Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, and so from that point on, you know, I knew that it was a reality that, you know, I'm going to be, could, could potentially be playing professional basketball right. here in the United right. States. Right. Um, so from that point, from 1996, I was like, okay, now, you know, I have to start to prepare myself now. Right. You know, because I know it's coming. Right, right. Yeah. You know, I always, you know, my game and everything, I, I knew, you know, knew that was going to be okay. But, you know, the other stuff, all the other stuff you have mm-hmm. to prepare for yeah. outside of that. Yeah. Um, so 1997 rolls around. It's my senior season. You know, right after our season ended, uh, we were we were ousted in the Sweet 16, which I was oh, so yeah. mad about. Because you guys were picked to be in the Final Four <laughs> in the championship that year. Yeah, we were we were picked to to run do a, you know have a pretty deep run um, in the NCAA. We we definitely was uh, they had us making it to at least the Elite Eight, and we mm-hmm. lost in the Sweet 16. Gotcha. So we got upset. Um, so it was like that happened. Right. You know, we lost the game, and it was like the next day you have to start to think about life after you know right. college basketball, and it, it all just happened so quickly after that. It was like, you know, two days later I'm sitting in coach's office. Right. She got a list of five agents that she thought would be, you know, we're interviewing agents and you know shoe companies and right. you know, it just everything just happened like you know, so quickly. And and next thing you know, you know, I'm moving into the next part of, you know, part of my career, but it, it, it happened so quickly, wow. so quickly. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So you, you, you mentioned something that was really, I thought was really unique uh, because there was two different pro, it was like the WNBA was, NBA was coming on, but mm-hmm. then the other girls that were already in kind of their pro career we're mm-hmm. playing it differently. Talk a little bit about that and then how it went to when you got drafted, how the whole came about. Sure. So we, I was fortunate, you know, to come out in a time where um, there was also a, the ABL, which was the American Basketball League. Mm-hmm. And it was a, a women's pro league that was formed in 95, I believe. Right. Um, so we knew about this league, um, but you know, the WNBA hadn't, still wasn't in existence in 95. They started to create theirs and and their inaugural season was in 97. So um, myself for the, for the seniors coming out in 1997, you actually had a pick of two leagues. You had the ABL, which, um, you know, it had, you know, decent backing. You would make a lot more money starting out in that league. Right. Or you can play in a WNBA, um, which had the backing of the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, you were, your salary first starting out wasn't going to be as high, but you still had that backing of the NBA. Yeah. So you kind of felt like, you know, this was a league that would could potentially do some things and, and have longevity. Right. Um, so it was either the money or the longevity, you yeah. know, you're right. kind of weighing those options. Right. Um, some, some women, you know, chose to go AB, the ABL way. I um, obviously chose to go the WNBA way. And then um, in 1999, right. the ABL folded. Oh, wow. And all of those players came into the WNBA. So now, you you know, that was when it was kind of like the best, the best of both worlds because you got all the top talent now in one league right. and you're not splitting it. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was an awesome time to come out and have an opp- opportunity to have an option of which one you wanted to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I came out at the right time, you know, to right. take place at, at, during that time. Yep. You know, and it's it's you know, you, it's just meant to be. Like, and, and talk about a little bit about where you uh, like draft fight. Where were you? Where you? Where were you uh, picked at? Picked up at what number in the draft? First round, second round? Yeah, I was fourteenth um, overall, second round. Um, but if you, if you, if you think you got to think about it this way. So it was the first ever WNBA draft. So that draft consisted of, um, players that had been playing professionally, you know, overseas for years. So they were thrown into that same pool with, with the college, uh, seniors coming out too. Um, so I was actually the third, um, college player to be selected. So if you really have, if you have a real draft, 
I would have been third overall. Uh, but because I was playing, you know, in a in a pool with all these other players that had been playing for for years overseas, right. um, they a lot of teams wanted to start with building right. um, building their team with veterans, you know, right. veteran experience. So a lot of those players went first, mm -hmm. um, and it was only like three of us that went in that top, gotcha. you know, I would say top fifteen picks. I got you. Now that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Doing it. So so we so let's go to your next path. So you now you now you get drafted. Who'd you get drafted by? So I got drafted um, by the Los Angeles Sparks. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I was ecstatic. Uh, when when I got that, you know, I was actually at, at the draft. I was one of the players invited um, to attend the draft. Um, and when, you know, <laughs> and anybody, if you know, you know, when you're in that draft room, you're just kind of nervous, trying to, you're just waiting for that number to be called. So I was ecstatic, right. you know, when they, when they called my number and, uh, you know, I, I knew I didn't want to go to New York. I thought that was too close to home and too too many ticket requests and too many <laughs> <laughs> I was like send me furthest away I could go <laughs> <laughs> right and LA was was what it was and, and I was ecstatic I, I was ready to go so let the let let everyone know like who was on your team because I mean obviously that was a powerhouse team you went on and yeah what, what players were there when you we played at LA sure so Lisa Leslie was the big draw um she was the uh, so it was Lisa um, Aisha Zhang, which was uh, she was uh, six eleven uh, Chinese player, um, Chinese national team player. Um, Deja Charles out of the University of Tennessee, um, mm -hmm. all everything out of Tennessee. And, yeah, Penny Toller out of Long Beach State, um, who had been playing over in Italy for like seven eight years before the WNBA, or maybe even longer. Um, before the WNBA was in existence. So I had those vets to kind of look up to. And then, you know, we, we had other, but those were the big four mm -hmm. um, that they kind of built the team around. Yeah. Um, and I had, pick, bro. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> I had some, I had some amazing vets, like really took their time with me and, you know, nurtured me and you know, helped me come along um, in that process. So I was from that, from that standpoint, just blessed to have that level of uh, let that level of talent come from them, and you know, just their willingness to, to help me and, and, and show me the ropes. You know, coming in as a rookie. The uh, the thing I think we I, I think I want to make sure everyone understands is that uh, it is a challenge. Like, so you're getting like it's like uh, it's like lifting weights, getting stronger. You want to get stronger, get better. You got to tear everything down, build it back up, tear it back down, build it back up. So high school to college, you had to break it back down, get back adjusted. Talk about, I mean, the, you were at the, with the elite of the elite. So mm -hmm. coming out as the player in the Big 12, the player, right? Third overall pick really in the draft. You come in, shoot, this should be easy. I come in and just step on the court and it happens. <laughs> just miracles happen, right? You just like, so but no, tell the truth. Like, is tell the truth about how this transition is now from college to pro as an elite athlete. Crazy. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's you know, as a college athlete, as you know, you know it's it's still fun. You still having an opportunity to play the game, and it's still you know fun. Um, no real pressure. You know, you have you have a little bit of pressure, but not really. Um, that jump from college athlete to professional is it's a business right. you know so the mindset needs to be that it's a business right. because it's a million other women you know that if you can't perform right. the duties that you signed your name on a dotted line to do that will love right. to fill your position and take that so you know you have to have a, it's a mindset switch it, you have to perform and you have to approach it like it's a business um, you know, even though you still love the game and all of those things that come with it, it, you know, people are making major business decisions based on how you perform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's a mindset switch and you, you know, a lot of people get caught up in, in that. Um, but you, it, it definitely is a mindset switch. <laughs> well, you know, you're getting challenged every day. Like I think you were talking about, uh, 
you know, it, you one year, you don't care how you did, if you went into All-Star or whatever, the next year, you had to come in like you just got there. Oh, yeah, every year. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you think about it, it's like, you know, everybody's excited about, you know, the draft. It's it's a hundred and, you know, a hundred and, what, ten positions? Uh, hundred and hundred and ten uh, slots to fill. Um, you know, they, they bring in, you know, drafting, you know, 40 new players a year. And, you know, the goal every year is what can you bring to your game? What you, what you have to add something to your game every year. You got to stay relevant. So you have to stay on top of your game. You know, it's, it's, it is really a doggy dog world. You know, it's a doggy dog world. It, yeah, it's I a business. It's yeah. People do anything. They're going to do, that's what I, I think people understand. Like pros, I don't care what pro, pro teams anyone's on, what sport. Mm -hmm. have, have to, they, they got people coming in that will do, that want to do everything and anything to get a position, to play, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? To, to make, help, hey, to feed their family, their kids. Right, right. It's a whole new level, like, right? It's a whole um, new level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so let's talk about, so give me, give me two of the most uh give me three players that you you like really helped you as your in your transition and becoming you know the all-star you became and the championships you won two two or three players in the WNBA that you really felt like um I would you know I would stick to the the vets that I you know already mentioned um Penny Tola was instrumental I thought she helped me a lot um Lisa Leslie um, and Deja Charles was the three that, you know, I could, I could lean on and, and just, you know, go back and forth with. Um, but not only that, I had coaches at those levels that believed in me too. Um, Carlene Thompson was one that was huge, um, that we still have a relationship today. Michael Cooper, um, my, my former uh, Spars coach, um, just coaches that kind of believed in my talent and would not settle for less for me because they knew what I would bring every day. So when I was, you know, when I showed up bringing less than that, you know, they didn't, they, they were like, what's going on here? They didn't take that. They didn't accept that. Okay. Um, so, so just having those, those type of coaches that, you know, that knew how to push my buttons and, and, and push me every day. Um, to excel and be my best, you know, I, I couldn't have been in a better position. Right. right. I mean, I, <clears throat> we all forget, but you're in the, the heyday. You were there because Coop was Cooper was a, a all you know all star Laker, mm -hmm. and um, which you know did really well. Had great great championships with Magic and them. And then yeah. you, uh, but then you were there when the Lakers had Kobe and Shaq, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the city. The city was on fire in 2000. 2000. 2001, 2002, that year, because we had um, both us and the Lakers, we had won, um, both of us won back-to-back -back championships the same years. Wow. So so the city was off. We we had the whole year on lock, you know. <laughs> they, yeah, we were, we were definite. It was, we were living. We were living a dream back then. <laughs> it's all about in LA too. Y'all the greatest show. On the oh, for sure. It was crazy. <laughs> Jack and Kobe, you already see him or hang out with him, or they come to practices or anything? Yeah, so yeah, we, um, they were like, you know, it was really like a, a family kind of affair. Um, they were a, around a lot, you know, not only um, Kobe and Shaq, you know, Rick Fox was around, right. Derek Fisher, right. um, Robert Ory, those guys, they were, you know, they were around a lot, you know, watched us, come, came to the game, supported us. Um, they were always in, you know, we shared the same training facility. So you would see them, you know, cross paths with them all the time, gotcha. you know, when they were in there getting shots up or, you know, getting extra treatment and things like that. Um, but it was really like a, you know, really like a family affair. Wow, really was. So did I hear something about, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, about Jordan and you and some shoes. And, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you talk a little bit about that. Like, I'm like, sure. kind of like seriously? God. Yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, you know, everybody knows the brand Jordan. Um, Jordan didn't have a uh, women's, uh, now he has women's brand Jordan athletes. Um, back then he handpicked me um, to represent his shoe. 
Wow. To wear his shoes, excuse me. It was me and um, Charlotte Smith, who was a player for the Charlotte Sting. Right. Um, he he handpicked both of us and, and asked us, would you know, would we represent him and wear his first ever um, women's Jordan shoe? Wow. Um, so you know, you know, and we all watching the Last Dance. <laughs> <laughs> so so when you know the great one of the great greatest of all time to ever do it, ask you to you know to wear wear his shoe, man. You, you right. it's, it, there, it's, right? it's definitely an ego booster. <laughs> <laughs> out of everyone in the WNBA, he calls you. That is, yeah, that, yeah. That would blow my mind. Hold up, I would just probably fall out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it was amazing. You so we were we were a part of the design of the shoe, um, and everything. So you know, I was already a Nike athlete. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but to 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 have him, you know, handpick me to 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 wear his line, man, it's that's extra cachet for oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's the first one female to have the women's Jordan brand. Man. Yeah, yeah. And you just helped design the shoe. Yeah, absolutely. So, so one of my good friends is funny. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but Steve Harvey, uh, he played with me. He's been a linebacker at KU. Uh, he played for the Bills for a little bit, but he, he works in graphic design. That was his major. Anyway, okay. I was talking to him like a week or two ago. And he said, they're making your jersey. They're doing a design on your jersey. They work with Nike. Uh-huh. It's so, so what's weird about it is uh, they're doing some design with your your jersey, and I, yeah. I think it's not the Sparks. It's the the team you played after the Sparks. Um, Houston Comets. Yeah, yeah. it's the okay. Comets shirt. And it's gonna have your name, the Nixon on the back. Yeah. And he was and he was he, he sent me a picture of the design and everything. Like so, they still yeah. sell your jerseys. Yeah, I, you know it's funny. Um, I just one of my Facebook friends. Uh, well, I don't, I didn't even know, you know, I just accept whoever on Facebook, right, right. Yeah. you know, um, had just told me that she had purchased a, uh, a Sparks jersey right. just, just recently. Right. Um, I didn't know they were still selling them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's, it's, it's nice, you know, to be able to be, you know, still, you know, I, I retired in 2011. And to still have people think about, you know, the times that I played, you know, in the league and, and still want to represent that, man, that's amazing. No doubt. <laughs> you know what's crazy is, so, I mean, let's just, let's just cut to the chase. I mean, obviously everyone at Q-World knows, I mean, real deal legend. I mean, so you're a two-time all-star in the mm-hmm. WNBA. Three times. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, my fault, my bad. <laughs> short changing, no short changing. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, um, you won that championship in the WNBA two times. Mm-hmm. Right. I Correct. mean, first woman to wear it ever to wear it, women's line of Jordan, mm-hmm. handpicked by the Michael Jordan at Michael Jordan. If everybody want to know, and yes. uh, and went on to just have a great career. Um, what would you say to all the all the girls now going into uh, this plan, just going into the draft, just got picked up, going into the WNBA, uh, a little heads up for them. Mm-hmm. I would tell them um, to to keep your head down and work on your craft. I think now it's so much, it's so so much, so many distractions right. um, outside of you know the actual game. Um, but I think if you could just focus and get back to the game. You know, you, you got drafted for a reason, so you're in there for a reason, but now you now the goal is to stay in there, you know. You got to figure out a way to stay in there, and the only way to do that is to get focused and focus on the game, uh, focus on getting better every day, um, and, and keep the distractions to a minimum because it's a lot of them out there. No doubt, no doubt. You, you know, and I, you know, and here's a big thing right now, and it's more prevalent now. We talked about a little COVID in this time, just in general, but the way this is affecting sports is really, it's like there's nothing, we've never ever seen anything like this before. Yeah, like it's never been a time where we couldn't play sports. Like yeah. it, it, it could be the world war going on, maybe we were playing sports. So right. Like, or boxing or something. There's right. really, really nothing shut down everything. So yeah. I believe like for me, and you can add, and you can add to it, but I just believe like now, like as we said, things are not ever gonna be the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> digital marketing, social media, all these platforms now are a million times bigger. 
I mean, mm -hmm. people didn't even care about them, thought they were fads back, you know, a year a year ago even. Mm -hmm. Now we're having to face the fact that they got to learn all this stuff because that's mm -hmm. where everything is going. Yeah. Uh, but talk more about athletes now, and especially now that the NCAA looks like they've approved to process, they're starting to process for uh, the college kids now to get paid for their likeness, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then obviously pros, I mean, because uh, you're successful, you got you got a business going on right now, mm -hmm. but pros are going into the WNBA, NBA, NFL, whatever, thinking I'm playing forever, then when they get done, they don't have anywhere to go. Right. So, you know, talk a little bit about these topics and, you know, how social media is uh, changing the game and needed. Social media is definitely changing the game. Um, and when I talk to young athletes, I always let them know, you know, you have to realize that whatever you put on social media is going to follow you. Um, and that starts early on. I, I mean, that starts, you know, middle school, you know, high school, you know, early stages of high school. Um, so you have to really, you know, be smart about what you put and what you post on social media starting earlier. And that, you know, that's, um, that gears, you know, that's geared towards, you know, how you, how you're branding yourself moving forward. Right. Um, so yeah, social media is big and, and you have to know how to utilize it to the best of your advantage. Right. Um, these young athletes today, because it's such a big part of, you know, how, how people move and, you know, how people socialize today. Right. Right. Um, so you got to be smart and be able to use it to the best of your ability. Definitely. I was talking to a couple of coaches uh, the last couple of weeks, and they're even saying now they're Zoom for, for even recruiting. Now they're Zooming, Zooming athletes. They can't come to the campus, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and you know, so and then not that they said they're looking at like they they're like looking at players work, now. They can't see them. They can't bring them in and work them out. Even the pros mm -hmm. now are getting like the M NBA right now. They'll be drafting. They're just looking at video. Then working out. They can't really bring right. them to play and, and you know get them in with the players. So. Right. I think that I think and you let me know is I mean having a good social media platform being able to have something to put out there so people can see what you're doing now is more important than it ever was before because they can't sure. yeah for sure for sure um definitely the, the all the workouts and stuff that people are doing on zoom and right. you know but when you know but when also you know to just to, to piggyback off what I just said you know <clears throat> because people you know, it's no face-to-face -face interaction with coaches and things like that now. You know, where you think they going to look at, you know, when they're looking at, when they're trying to figure out what the character of the person is. Right. They're going back to see what you've been posting, really? you know, on, on these sites and things like that. So, you know, the, the social media, man, it's, it's huge. And you got to, like I said, you got to know how to utilize that to the best of your advantage in, this, in these times and days. Oh, that's so true. So true. Mm -hmm. So let everybody know like where you are now, what's going on in your world, you know, the successful well, success doesn't stop with you. It just keeps going on and on. Yeah. So, <laughs> now and uh, what keeps you busy? Sure. So now I'm an entrepreneur. I own a rental car business um, in New Jersey. Um, I'm starting to dabble a little bit in real estate. Wow. Um, and, you know, I, you, in this COVID situation, you just start to figure out and pick up little things here and there so now you know after COVID you know I'm learning I'm learning another trade which is day trading which I'm, I'm yeah I, I've always had an affinity for the stock market mm -hmm. and always invested right. um, but you know I've had a couple of friends that have done very well mm -hmm. day trading and so now, you know, I'm learning a little bit about that. You know, just trying to add, you know, little tools to my toolbox. That's right. While this COVID thing is going on, you know, I say, I always tell people, if you if you haven't learned a new hobby or you know, learned a new skill while while you in this COVID situation, you don't use the time. You the time you didn't use the time correctly. <laughs> you, are, you preaching? This is exactly what I said. Yeah. This is not the time to be sitting around like just chilling. Absolutely. This is a blessing, blessed time. I mean, outside of people getting sick and dying, mm -hmm. understand that that's horrible. But if you are, if you're able to be at home right now and you got access to TV and computers and anything, so phones, if mm -hmm. you are not learning a new craft, I don't care if it's playing a piano, learning to read music, something. Yep, that's the truth. You that's are. 
it's odd to me. Come on, we're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, there are a lot of people doing it, but that's what, but here's the key though. It's, it's crazy, but we know this back from sports. There's just, you can tell someone how to do it, when to do it, where to do it, you know, how often, the whole, whole nine, and they still won't do it. A majority yeah. of people out there won't do it. That's why, like you said, the work ethic, the stuff you went through, Mm -hmm. No one wants to do it. They want to be get, get your accolades. Obviously, everyone wants to be an all-star, wants to be the first to wear Jordan brand for women. Exactly. But they don't want to go out there and to put all that time and work into it. Right. And that's the that's the that's that's what separates the, the people who've done that with the people who haven't. You know, I get the question all the time from kids. I'm like, you know, you know, they're always like, well, how did you get, you know, how did you make it to the professional leagues? And I, and and they, they want me to bring out some magic formula, but it really isn't a magic formula. It's what you put into it, you know, and you gotta be willing to do what most people, I would say what 95% of the people won't do to get right. where you wanna be, That's exactly you know? And it's a reason why those 5% or 2% or 1% of the people make it. And there's a reason why 99% don't, cause they don't wanna put the word in. I tell you, <laughs> even when I talk to people like what time you can I call you whatever you call me anytime I'm looking I want business <laughs> yeah. two in the morning three in the morning that's what you got or you in overseas hey I am up we gonna right. make it happen so no, no exactly yep so I got one question I want to ask you so sure. MJ or LeBron let me know who you got <laughs> oh and I love Bron Bron I love I Bron do. I, I do but when you, and you know, I lived in the times uh, watching Mike and, and I've, I've been fortunate to live and, and see, you know, LeBron's career as well. And I'm gonna, I have to go with Mike still mm -hmm. um, because when you think about it, how many Hall of Famers right. did, Mike, did Mike deny championships to? That, that's, that's it. I mean that that's I mean LeBron he's still writing his story. Oh yeah. And you know it, it but you know right now man Mike man. Yep. Cold <laughs> cold, cold blooded. Yeah, you <laughs> cold blooded and when you and when you look at you know the documentary it just brings oh. brings all of those those memories back and you know and I love LeBron. I think he's a, 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 an exceptional player. But it's just it's just a level that Mike was on that, you know, I I don't think anybody is gonna touch. No. I don't think so. No. You know what I wanna do? Uh, and I agree with you hundred percent though. Um, MJ all day. There is no <laughs> I mean, there's something to say when someone will will themselves no matter what is going on, how they mm -hmm. feel, whatever, to beat you no matter what, that is just that's rare. I've just never at whatever it is, and only that, that's why I tell <laughs> that's why I tell people now the things that the players are doing now today. Like I say before, before MJ, it was uh, it was uh, Dr. J, mm -hmm. right? All the things that he, he was doing, things, the styles and moves that really no one has seen before, right? Then Michael came in. You believe you could fly? That cat was in the air forever, mm -hmm. right? And the revolution, moves, the fadeaway, all that stuff. Michael was doing that. No one was really doing that back then, right? He revolutionized the game, right? Point blank. Now everybody's doing these. They did, obviously evolved more, but you know, it all came from everybody watching Michael back in the day. So. Right, and you get, you know, you get a lot of these, you know, the younger guys who really haven't seen you know, Jordan, the Jordan era, you know, they always like, you know, uh, the, the comparison is, you know, the evolution of the game, the evolution of the athlete. I said, but if, okay, so if you say that, then you have to evolutionize Mike. Right. And in today's game, Mike is averaging 60. Oh Easy. my God. Oh, he's killing them. <laughs> Easy. So you can't have that argument. You, you can't really have that argument because, you know, today's, soft NBA game where you can't touch players and right. you can't hand check them right. and you can't put no no body weight on Mike you can't guard him you, can, you can't guard him without being physical with him he was dunking on centers I mean real centers <laughs> yeah. right. I mean you right. and, and he's these are real centers big boys like seven right. foot is he going to lay he's dunking on you absolutely there's not really a real center anymore everybody's going to go outside shoot three 
He yep. would open this, up the floor. It's over. He would just yeah. dominate. Yeah, he in this today's game, he'd kill it because you, you, you it's just a different game now. Right. You can't you can't blow on the player now. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> different game. <laughs> So while we talking, I, I will want to. I'm, I'm going to follow up with you, but I, I think I want to. I mean, and, I'm, and it's something I want to present to you. But I do have a um, on my on my digital marketing side. I have a uh, a sports side. Okay. And I would love to talk to you a little bit about that, and, and, help, and I would love to have you involved. Okay. With, uh, we, all we're doing is helping these athletes build their brand. Uh, mm-hmm. from pro professional ranks to the college ranks. Now they're getting paid for their likeness, helping them and protecting them and guiding them like you do, like you know, you've been there. Right. You want people on the team that's been there at, at the high level. Right. To talk to these athletes about this is what you need to do and why you need to do it. Not only that, why are you playing ball and you're getting your all star, you're getting these, all these different accolades. Are you going to do real estate? Mm-hmm. Are you going to do, start planning that now? Don't say you got a deep dive in it. Obviously, you got your job. But yeah. You, you gotta start evolving and getting into and and that way when they leave and they're done they like boom they're right full speed running right back into that and doing well so right that's uh, awesome yeah that's what it's hot but i'd yeah i'd love to talk to you a little bit off off air with that but um mm-hmm. we so definitely can uh, connect with you and, and and if they want to talk to you or ask questions young athletes or whatever sure i'm on instagram you can follow me at the and it's t-h-e-e Tamika Dixon, T-A-M-E-C-K-A, D-I-X-O-N. Um, that's probably the easiest way. I'm on Facebook as well at Tamika Dixon. Um, those are my two platforms that I use for the, you know, use. I, I'm actually just new to Instagram. I, I've just, law, uh, you know, just got an account up and running in the last two to three weeks here. Oh, so good, then. That's I, good. I, I'm learning. <laughs> Welcome to the new world. That's what yes, I'm absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you can find us, Q World. Uh, we're on Instagram. It's uh, at Q underscore world podcast. Uh, Facebook, we're at Q World po- podcast. Uh, the, we're on uh, Twitter uh, at Q World. Uh, we're also at uh, 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 we have a YouTube channel, so YouTube channel is Q World, and then also our uh, Apple uh, podcast and our app, our SoundCloud podcast is at Q World Podcast. So uh, we'll let everybody come out, follow us. This will be out, uh, Tamika, in about uh, about two weeks. Uh, so we'll have this fresh out. We'll make sure we at, do advertising, make sure. But if you have any questions, reach out to her. Reach out to me. We'll make sure we get them answered. We want to help all the athletes out there. We can uh, make these right decisions and be prepared. I think is the best case. We just want you mm-hmm. to be prepared so you know when you're going in what you, what expectations are or what you what you need to do. But Absolutely. really, truly, deep down in my heart, you know, all the love. I really appreciate this. This is actually you no. Know, everyone knows it's the second time we've had to do this because I forgot to record. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming back again and doing this. And I'm truly looking forward to the future and, and hopefully partnering with you in some form or manner because I'm really excited. Keep these Jayhawks together. Awesome, Marlon. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, you have a good one. All right, take care. You do the same. Bye-bye.